when it first started noticing that's, that's when everything began. Um, and so the, people don't understand how much our diet has changed over here. And how culinary innovation has been a constant throughout all of the history of cooking. So it's not like, oh yeah, there used to be traditional stuff and now there's this new thing. It's all a continuum. If what we call tradition was a big innovation at one point. Here we are with Dr. Nathan Mervold, first visit to Toronto that you can yeah. remember anyway, and some of your first visit that's related to a cookbook, the wonderful five volume set, Modernist Cuisine. Tell me a little bit about who the intended buyer, like we've been selling it a lot to chefs, but I know we've also been selling it uh, sometimes to people who are just avid interest in food. Yeah, I think it's for people who have a um, passionate interest in food and a lot of curiosity about it. If you don't have both passion and curiosity, there's probably other simpler cookbooks. Um, but if you do have passion and uh, curiosity, then I think it makes sense. He'll edit it. So, uh, let me set that over. So, we wrote the book for people who uh, have passion and curiosity about food. Uh, some of those people will treat it like a coffee table book. They will look at the photos, they will read the captions, they'll learn things about food that would be hard to learn any other place. Uh, other people will actively cook from it at home. Um, of course I do, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Scrambled eggs, <laughs> one of your favorites. Uh, but there are, if you look on the internet, there's thousands of people who have uh, bought the book and are cooking from it in their home kitchens and blogging about the results. Um, then of course finally there's professionals, people who cook for a living, and for them, the cookbook isn't just a sort of a cool thing, it's something that's a professional tool, it's like yeah. a set of knives. And you had about 30 people working on this at, and at the peak point, but you yeah. worked on this for about six years, if not longer. Mm -hmm. Certainly in your mind you probably worked on it even longer. <laughs> what surprised you the most in the whole process? Did you learn? I mean, you're constantly learning, I know, but what suddenly <laughs> went, oh, I had no clue that was going to be like that or that, because it's a very much a science. So there's a lot of things that we learned like that. Uh, one example is uh, confit, you know, the, the technique of cooking duck legs in duck fat. Right. Um, and any chef would tell you that there's a special texture and flavor to the meat that you get from doing that. That's why the, this technique is used. It's been branch, branched out now, so people cook lots of other things, confit besides duck legs. Yeah. And so we were trying to figure out how does that work? I mean, how could the duck fat actually penetrate the meat and change the texture? And then we decided, actually, it can't. Uh, so we did a bunch of experiments where we would cook it traditionally, we'd yeah. cook it sous vide, or we'd even steam it. Really? And, it, and in a random taste test, we couldn't tell the difference. difference. It makes you wonder too, doesn't it? I mean, it's, you know, you talk about aeration of wine too, which I always mm -hmm. find amusing, and you say it doesn't make any difference really how you aerate it. Um, well, in fact, we, our preferred method of aerating it is to use a blender. Blender, I know, and I <laughs> love telling people that one. Um, now, going back though a bit, you said in a conversation earlier that you, you, learned, you used to take your mother's cookbooks and, and cook. <laughs> what were those cookbooks? What did you use? As a kid, young kid. Well, I looked, I pretty quickly supplemented mom's cookbooks with trips to the library. Yeah. Uh, I think mom had the joy of cooking. Excellent, though. And maybe Better Homes and Gardens yeah. had this uh, red and white check. Yeah, the check Yeah, exactly, the binder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I went and got all these other cookbooks from the library, and uh, I found the whole thing fascinating the idea that you could get a book from the library and learn how to cook in a style. Chinese or Thai or right. French, uh, I thought that was just fantastic. Um, so, not that it always worked for me yeah. when I was a kid, but... <laughs> You've the, had some disasters, I assume, along the way. Well, everybody does. Yeah, um, I, it's, it's true. And you learn from those, though, too, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Will you do another? Well, I mean, I love how you say also as well that digital technology has allowed you to make the most fantastic printed book, and I think <laughs> that's a real testament, too. To There's never been a better time to make yeah. a paper book. Which sounds ironic because uh, people think, well, gee, this is a time when everything should be on a Kindle or an iPad. Right. And there is a place for Kindle and iPad, and I love it for text-only books. For rich books with tremendous amounts of photos and other rich information, yep. the best way to have a big, high-resolution picture is still a paper book. But the same digital technology allows us to have all this other uh, approaches to publishing does allow you to make a great paper book. And yeah. You can lay it all out with um, Adobe InDesign, yeah. you can uh, e email all of the files to China, the yeah. people in China send you the proofs back and voila, it all kind Incredible, of works. 
Yeah, it really is amazing. Um, we do hope, because I, I'm a passionate baker, and I was a little, little disappointed the lack of ba But that is so much a science thing, and when somebody said, you know, that maybe he's working on one that's separate, I could imagine you doing a whole separate on a baking. Oh, we, that's we've, just we've certainly talked about it. The uh, baking pastry and dessert yeah. could be another fantastic series. Uh, and so that's one of the things we'll consider about doing next, but we'll also consider doing maybe slightly smaller projects next, because <laughs> after six just, years of your life, it's well, the Exactly. And, we'll, we'll, and this is just, this, you've got a day job too. <laughs> We've just finished this multi-year slog. Yeah. It'd be nice if our next book didn't have quite so long a term. So we might, we might do a shorter term one before we tackle. A smaller book. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah small, small little 500 page I, I, book, I, some <laughs> pamphlet size. Which in the scheme of things, where this is 2,400 pages, <laughs> that would be great. Anyway, thank you Nathan for coming to Toronto. Terrific, thank you. Thank you.